we're going to be talking about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy which a body possesses by virtue of being in motion. That's kind of a wordy and strange definition. So to understand exactly what kinetic energy is, let's take a look at just a plain old car. All right, so here we have a car. Uh, we're gonna say this car has some mass of M. I don't care what this value of M is. You can make up a number, whatever suits you. It doesn't matter. We're just gonna call it M. I want this car to start at rest. But what we're gonna do is actually go through and work out a problem that you already know how to solve. It seems strange we're talking about kinetic energy. That's new, it has a big fancy definition. Shouldn't we be learning how to do new stuff? Nope, not in this case. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this car of mass M and we're gonna put a plain old force of F forward on the car. I don't wanna worry about friction and all that jazz in this problem. We're just gonna push on this car with some force F. And we're gonna allow this car to move forward some displacement D. Now again, I don't care how big F is or how large D is. These are just variables. We're gonna work out this entire problem in terms of variables. And in this problem, what we're actually solving for is the final velocity. And so what we're gonna do is exactly what you expect us to do or expect me to do. And that is, we're gonna apply Newton's second law to this car, and then we're gonna use the good old kinematics to solve for final velocity. So here we go. Applying the second law on the x-axis, there's only this force F acting forward. It's gonna accelerate our mass M forward at some rate A in the X direction. So we could even go so far as to say the horizontal acceleration of this car is going to be F, the forward force over M. Now, applying this to the kinematic equations, we're gonna come up with an expression for the final velocity. And I'm gonna take and rearrange this a little bit in kind of a, a strange way. You'll see why in just a second. Pulling the two and the M over. And we wind up with this equation right here. We have one half MVF squared equals FD. And in order to understand kinetic energy and how it ties into Newton's second law in kinematics, I wanna go back to our definition of work. I don't want to worry about this dot product issue here. We talked about that before. I want to talk about work as being FD cosine theta. That is a force times a displacement times a cosine of the angle between these two vectors. So here we have a force forward and a displacement forward. So in this case, this force forward causing this car to accelerate is going to do some work over this displacement. So the work done on the car is going to be F times d. There's no cosine term because these are parallel to each other and the cosine of zero is one. So the work done on the car is fd. Ultimately what's happened here is energy has been given to the car. As the car has accelerated forward, the car has gained energy. That is the result of positive work being done on the car. I say it's positive because the car is gaining energy. And so Looking at this from our definition of work, and going back to this idea that we can't really keep track of energy itself, what we can see and quantify is work being done. I wanna go back to this equation that we came up with right here. One half MVF squared equals this term, which is in fact the work that was done on the car. And we know this work that was done on the car, the energy that went into the car ultimately caused it to speed up. And so this car has been given energy, and that energy is what we call kinetic energy. The equation for kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared. And this little guy right here is a big, big deal. It is a consequence of our equation for work when applied to a moving object. 
So this will show in the future, this is incredibly useful. And what we're also gonna see in the future is this equation is going to take things like the kinematics and Newton's laws and toss them out the window. Yes, we're still gonna have to deal with forces and displacements, but these equations, we're actually gonna be able to get around or skirt by using energy methods, which some of you might appreciate. There's a couple things to be pointed out here about kinetic energy. And the first one we can see is this little squared right here. If I was to push this car to the right, we know it would be speeding up, and we've gotten used to the convention that right is to the positive. It would have a positive final velocity. But if I was to do the same thing, pushing the car to the left, well, this squared right here basically means we don't care whether our final velocity is positive or negative. The consequence of this is kinetic energy, and really all energy, is what we call a scalar. A scalar is the opposite of a vector. A vector has both magnitude and direction. Something like force has a direction. Displacement has a direction. Energy, it has just a magnitude. We call it a scalar. It has no direction. The car moving to the right with a certain amount of energy is no different than the car moving to the left with the same amount of energy. Energy, and in this case, kinetic energy, doesn't depend on direction. We can see that here because of the squared. Whether I put in a positive or a negative value doesn't affect the outcome here. So this is the quick and dirty derivation of our equation for kinetic energy and how it relates back to work. How to apply this equation, we'll take a look at in the future when we go through and we use what's called the work energy theorem. But we'll leave that for another day. And so on that note, that's all for now.